if there was an eternal universe, does that negate the theory of the Big Bang? Or so we say the universe began 13.8 billion years ago. But actually, all we know... What if the universe we live in isn't the only one? What if there are other universes where things are different? Some scientists believe there are an infinite number of universes, and those multiverses can be broken down into smaller pieces called bubbles, each one existing on its own with different laws of physics and properties. We believe, though we cannot yet prove, that our multiverse of universes is 11-dimensional. So think of this 11-dimensional arena, and in this arena there are bubbles, bubbles that float, and the skin of the bubble represents an entire universe. So we're like flies trapped on flypaper. We're on the skin of a bubble. It's a three-dimensional bubble. The three-dimensional bubble is expanding, and that's called the Big Bang Theory. So are we really living in a huge bubble? And is the Big Bang Theory wrong? Join us as we dig into the bubble multiverse theory, as well as which scientific experiments have been performed to test it. A persistent cosmological puzzle has been troubling physicists since 1917. What is the universe made of? Complicating this already mind-boggling question is the fact that our best theories conflict with our observations of the universe. Albert Einstein, according to scientific folklore, felt a unique responsibility for introducing this entire problem, reportedly referring to it as his biggest blunder. Essentially, Einstein's novel theory of general relativity didn't hold up when used to describe the universe as a whole. General relativity described the geometry of space-time as being a trampoline-like surface. Planets are heavy bowling balls that distort the surface, creating curves. If a less heavy ball, like a marble, was placed near the bowling ball, it would roll along the surface just like the motion of planets in orbit. Thus, orbits are explained not by a gravitational force, but by curvature in space-time. This proposal worked when considering small regions of space-time, but when Einstein applied it to the entire universe, its predictions didn't fit. So Einstein introduced the cosmological constant, a fixed value that represents a kind of anti-gravity, anti-mass, and anti-energy, counteracting gravity's effects. But when scientists discovered that the universe was expanding rather than static, as Einstein had believed, the cosmological constant was set to zero and more or less ignored. After we learned that the universe's expansion is accelerating, however, scientists could no longer conveniently cancel out Einstein's anti-gravity suggestion. What was previously assumed to be empty space in the universe now had to be filled with huge amounts of mysterious anti-energy in order to explain observations of the universe's ever-quickening expansion. Even so, observations of the universe's expansion suggest that the energy is 60 to 120 orders of magnitude lower than what recent quantum field theory predicts. What this means is that all of this extra energy is somehow missing when we look at the universe as a whole. Either it's effectively hidden or very different in nature to the energy we do know about. Today, theoretical physicists are trying to reconcile these mysteries by examining the structure of so-called space-time in the universe at the smallest possible scale. With surprising findings, space-time might not be the trampoline-like plane scientists once envisioned. It might be a foamy mess of bubbles, all containing many universes living and dying inside our own. To try and solve the mystery of what fills the universe, scientists have been exploring the possibility that it's actually full of bubbles. 
The quantum foam theory has been around since 1955, when physicist John Wheeler came up with it, but it's seeing a resurgence in 2019. Modern researchers sense we may be closing in on the technology we'll need to actually observe and measure dark energy, or whatever the universe is made of. The space-time foam explanation for dark energy basically says that the space in between conventional matter is occupied by bubbles that work like dark matter. They keep the classical matter and energy in the universe from becoming ubiquitous, at least theoretically. What's astonishing is that according to the research, these bubbles have their own continuum. They're self-contained universes. Time doesn't have to work the same way inside these bubbles because, for the purposes of this theory and due to a concept called entropy, the arrow of time isn't necessary to explain the quantum world. If you were a subatomic piece of dark matter caught in a space-time foam bubble, you might experience time backwards, sideways, or not at all. Dark energy would have to work apart from our classical model of thermodynamics, while simultaneously accepting the parts of it we consider immutable. Space-time foam theoretically accomplishes this. It's a potential piece of evidence towards a grand theory of everything. If that doesn't boggle your mind, consider this. If space-time foam is real and scientists can prove it exists, such knowledge would force us to consider that our own universe may be nothing more than a tiny bubble in someone else's universe that could pop at any moment. That reminds us of the concept of a multiverse. We currently do not have a solid understanding of the earliest moments of the Big Bang. We know the general outline. Our universe was once much smaller and hotter in the past. Nowadays, it's not so small, and it's a whole lot colder. We've tested this basic idea against a variety of experiments, too. But as we rewind the clock to the Big Bang, we reach a scale where our physics simply breaks down. When the universe was less than a second old, the conditions of the cosmos were so extreme that we have no theory of physics to guide us. That said, we do suspect that in its earliest moments, the universe underwent a radical transformation event known as inflation. It appears from all available evidence that when our cosmos was only a fraction of a second old, it rapidly expanded to enormous proportions, growing by at least a factor of 1060. This inflationary event set the stage of the remainder of the Big Bang, when our universe flooded with particles and radiation that would then grow up to become galaxies, stars, and planets. Here's where we get a multiverse. Maybe inflation never ended. Maybe the entire universe is constantly undergoing this out of control rapid expansion, but pieces of it branch off and settle down into something more sedate. Thus, what we call the universe is just a tiny bubble of the true, ever-inflating, ever-expanding, huge universe. In this view of inflation, the entire universe never stops inflating. It just keeps getting bigger at an accelerated pace, faster even than the speed of light. What triggers a patch to slow down and pinch off is merely a random quantum fluctuation. Our patch of the universe just happened to randomly stop inflating, compared to the larger universe. But the rest of the universe outside our bubble continues to do what it was doing before, and what it will always do. Our patch is not alone. Different patches can also randomly settle down and become a normal, calmly expanding universe. To observers in any of those patches, they will see a big bang in their past, just like we do. They will have a cosmos filled with matter and radiation, just like we do. And they will have a limit to what they can observe, just like we do. In this never-ending inflation scenario, each of these patches, 
or bubbles or pockets or whatever metaphor makes the most sense to you appears as its own universe, with each universe separated by a vast and ever-growing expanse of absolutely nothing. This is a physically motivated and possibly very real multiverse, a collection of independent, separate universes filled with entities, stars, planets, people, each doing their own thing. In the multiverse, our universe is not the first bubble to arise, but merely one of an infinite chain of universes. Imagine a giant foam, like the top of a bubble bath. The universe is the foam itself, always growing and always creating new bubbles, with each bubble acting as its own independent cosmos. All of these bubble universes exist within the same framework of space-time. If you point your finger in any random direction, somewhere out there, past some unfathomably huge distance, is another universe, and beyond that, another, and beyond that, another. If this kind of inflation truly never ends, then there are an infinite number of universes out there in the multiverse. Each one of those universes could have ended their local inflation in the same way, but it's also possible that as each universe pinched off, it got a brand new set of physics to go along with it, with different collections of forces and particles. Some of those universes would look incredibly similar to our own. Others may have failed, full of nothing but void. Some may be far stranger than we can possibly imagine, and some may be exact replicas of us. If, and this is a big if, there are only a finite number of ways to arrange all the particles in a given universe, then with an infinite number of universes, you're bound to get repeated copies. That means that not only is there another universe out in some random direction, but that if you follow that line far enough, you'll encounter a duplicate of you doing the exact same thing right now in this present moment. This is all pretty wild, but difficult to test. The problem is that all the bubbles of the multiverse are completely inaccessible from each other. They exist, but not in any connected way, so we can't just get in a rocket and fly off to head to our nearest neighbor, but there may have been some cosmic accidents in our ancient past. When our universe was younger, it had just broken off from the larger inflation-driven flow. If another bubble universe just happened to nucleate close to ours, then there's a small chance that our universes may have briefly intersected before being permanently driven away from each other. The chances of that happening are incredibly small, but not zero, which provides a way to test the multiverse. Unfortunately, no observations of the larger cosmos have revealed any indications that we have suffered such a collision. While those experiments don't rule out the multiverse idea, they don't exactly help. The only thing left we have to go on is our theoretical understanding of the early universe, which we don't really understand. We have only a vague picture of what inflation is like, we do not know what powered it, why it had the energies that it did, or why it shut off in our cosmos. We don't even know if inflation automatically leads to a multiverse, or if we're misunderstanding our own math. Still, while physicists continue to debate the idea, it does make for a good story. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.